not a lot of money in the bank account and I really don't want to open up a probate estate. Hi, I'm Darren Finling from the Probate Pro. We're going to walk through a particular type of process that's afforded in Michigan called an affidavit of decedent successor for delivery of certain assets owned by decedent. That's a big mouthful for essentially a one page affidavit process that allows you to gain access to monies that belonged to the decedent and are under a certain threshold amount of money without the necessity of going through the extensive probate process. This is a process that often can be done without the assistance of an attorney. It can be done by completing the form and following the requisite steps and very quickly getting money from a financial institution into a family member's hands. Now again, this form is available. You can search for it or you can go to my website or call my office. We're happy to provide it to you. It is an affidavit form of probate, which means there is no court involvement. Hear me again, no court involvement in the probate process here or in this process to gain access to the funds. Let's work our way through this document. I'm going to start at the bottom, which is kind of an odd place to start, but I think it's a critical part of this particular sworn statement. When you sign a sworn statement, you are asserting under the penalties of perjury, under oath, that this statement is true. So utilizing the statement means that you're going to fill it out correctly or subject yourself to both civil and criminal liability if you do it incorrectly. So please do it correctly. Don't play games with it to avoid getting yourself into a whole heap of trouble. Let's work our way through it. At the top line is the identification of the person that has died. Then what is your relationship to that person? Are you a spouse, an adult child, or if there is no spouse or adult children, are you an heir at law? Is there a will? Are you the devisee within the will? The next area is more pertinent information about the person that died. And the reason that you have to disclose the date of death is that this form can only be used if, if 28 days have passed since the decedent has died. So one of the struggles with this form is if money is sitting at a bank account and you need the money to bury the individual, this process is not an appropriate process because 28 days often is too long of a period of time to gain access for burial. There are other ways to get access to funds outside of this process. The next is that this process is not for real property. And when we use the term, the legal term, real property, the way we differentiate them is real property is like, like a land or house or uh, uh, an apartment building. Personal property or monies can be used with this form, but not real property. The next is when the form was created, the threshold amount was $15,000. Now, the decedent's estate, meaning the value, less any liens, does not exceed 23,000 in the year 2019. And as each year goes by, there's a slight cost of living adjustment to make sure that we're keeping pace with uh, the cost of living. So now in 2019, when this is shot, the amount is up to $23,000. Another requirement is that there is no pending probate involved and that it's not pending or has been granted in any other jurisdiction, nor has a petition for an assignment, which is a short form of probate, been filed or utilized. The next is the assertion of the amount of money, the request that you're asking for the payment or the delivery. So for example, if there was a bank account that had $12,000 and you're using this form to gain access to $12,000, that's what you'd write in that particular statement. The next is an identification of the people that under the statute are entitled to share and their relative proportions. So for example, if it's a spouse, the spouse would be listed there and maybe it says 100%. But if there was no spouse and three children, 
that amount may just simply identify a third, a third, a third for each of the three children. These are just simply examples to give you a sense of how you fill out that portion of the The next is that you have attached a copy of the death certificate to the form itself. And then the signature and notarization is required for this document to be effective. Now this document is a really valuable tool in your tool shed when somebody has died. But it's not the only document or the only process. It's used in very specific circumstances. There are all sorts of other uh, probate related processes that may be available to you. Informal probate, formal probate, a supervised administration, unsupervised administration, a process to gain access to a will or a testamentary document, as well as a summary proceeding probate. So these are just some more examples of tools that are available when somebody has died and you're trying to gain access to those assets. If you've got further questions about this process or any of the probate processes in Michigan, give us a call at 877-YOUR-FIRM or visit us at theprobatepro.com.